Hi folks, welcome to Open Source Options. In this tutorial, we're going to do some remote sensing with QGIS. We're going to learn to calculate NDVI, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, from Landsat satellite imagery. Now this is really simple to do, and we're going to walk through all the steps here. All right, so the first thing we need is some Landsat data. Now, I already have some downloaded, so we're not going to download it in this tutorial, but I have another tutorial that shows you how to download analysis-ready Landsat data, and I will try to remember to link that in the cards above. Okay, so I'm going to go grab the data I already have. I'm going to go to my QGIS browser. I have this Landsat folder here. Now, before we get the data, let's go and just review what the normalized difference vegetation index is so that we can make sure we get it right. So NDVI, the normalized difference vegetation index, is the near infrared wavelength or the the band, the imagery band representing near infrared, subtracted from the band representing red, um, divided by NIR plus red. Now the reason this is called the normalized difference vegetation index is vegetation reflects near infrared light meaning that value will be high for vegetation, and it absorbs red light, meaning that value will be low for vegetation. Okay, so when we have a high value minus a low value, we get a high value, and that results in a high value where we have green ve vegetation and low values where we do not have green vegetation. All right, so the next thing we need to check out is which Landsat 8 bands represent these wavelengths or these... Uh, a visible light basically. So if we go to Landsat 8, you can Google Landsat 8 bands and you'll get to a page like this. And so this shows me that band 4 gives me the red portion of the visible spectrum and band 5 gives me the near infrared portion of the spectrum. Okay, so that's not really visible light, but um, we get it there. So we want to use band 5 as near infrared and band 4 as red. Okay, so we're going to go back to QGIS, and we can perform this calculation really easily. Okay, so here I am in QGIS. I need band 4 for red and band 5 for near infrared. So there's band 4 for red. There's band 5 for near infrared. Okay, and we'll just close that down a little. So you can see here on my screen that these are just grayscale because it's only showing one value in each. We don't have all the bands displayed in a color image, and that's okay. All right, so next, let's go ahead and um, do this calculation, and we can use the raster calculator for this. So I'm going to come down to the bottom left corner here um, where I can type to locate something. I am going to start typing raster calculator. Okay, and you'll notice I have three options. I have the GDAL raster calculator, the QGIS, and the Saga. I'm just going to go for the QGIS, the one that has the little gear wheel next to it, okay? I'm going to double click on that. All right, now let's zoom back out so you can see what we got going on. And we'll see if we can make this a little bigger. I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, there we go. So you can see I have my raster band layers added here. So I have band 4, band 5. So band 5 is near infrared, band 4 is red. And down here I can enter that expression. So I need to use some parentheses, so let's put a set of parentheses here, and divide, and a set of parentheses there. Now if you remember, it's going to be near infrared, which is band 5, and then we want to subtract red, just like that, and I'm just double clicking on these to add them down there, and I'm going to come down, and I want to do near infrared, and I want to do plus red, okay? And so you can see that I have that equation entered in. Now please note that for the top for the subtraction, the order of bands does matter. For the bottom, the addition, the order of bands does not matter. All right, so I have my expression entered in. What I can do now is I need to come down. It has a predefined expression that I can use. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to do it this way. I'm going to show you this way because if you know how to do it this way, you can figure out how to do it the other way with a predefined expression, but this also allows you to learn how to do it for other indices that may not be included in predefined expressions. Okay, um, so we can use a reference layer. This will just make sure our cell size matches up with what we have here. So I'm going to select, um, it doesn't matter which one of these, we're just going to select one and say okay. 
and uh, we're all good to go there. That will set the cell size, the output extent, and the output CRS. And then I'm going to come down to the output, and I'm going to save this to a file. And uh, I'm going to save this. I don't know why it's saying yes. I want to get rid of this one. Sorry, that was from a previous test I was doing. Um, I want to save this as a TIFF file, so I'm going to do ndvi.tiff. And we should be able to find TIFF right there. Okay, and so this is going to save it as a TIFF file, and I'll click Save there. All right, so now at this point, I am ready to run um, my NDVI. So let's click Run. And this will take just a sec. Okay, so there we go. You can see it's been added in over here. Let's go ahead and click Close. Okay, now I'm going to change the symbology here so we can see what's going on. I'm going to double click on this. And we're going to come over to Symbology. We'll make this single band pseudo color. Um, let's see what we got as far as color ramps. Sure, let's use the brown and blue green. It will be, that'll be decent. Okay, we'll try that one. And what I want to do is I want to um, make this interpolation linear. Sure, that's fine. Let's make this equal interval. Five classes, classify. Okay, and so I want to make this 0, 0.0, because we want 0 to be gray. Uh, we're going to make this negative 0. 0.5. Oops. Negative 0. 0.5. We're going to make this negative 1.0. And we'll come down here, and this will be 0. 0.5. And that will keep the same, we'll label it as 1.0. Um, and then we'll click OK. All right, so you can see here that we get, uh, we can see the areas where there's some sort of vegetation. We have positive and where we have negative. So you can see the water here. Um, water absorbs near infrared light, and so we get very low NDVI values on water. Okay. Now we can go and adjust this just a little bit more. If we take this uh, and we change this to discrete, um, oops, let's go ahead and adjust these again. This will make it uh, a little bit better, I think. So let's make this one um, 0 0.25. Let's make this one negative 0 0.25. Okay, and then let's make this one negative 0 0.5, and let's make this one 0 0.5. Okay, and this will bend things out a little better, so let's click Apply and OK. And now you can see the areas where we have the highest NDVI uh, and the areas where we have a lower NDVI. Okay. So it really is that simple to calculate NDVI in QGIS and to display it. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope it's helped you learn a little bit about remote sensing and a vegetation index that is used very often. And I'm trying to write these uh, tutorials up and put them on my website, opensourceoptions.com. So if you want to go see what we have available on opensourceoptions.com, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Also, I have a QGIS course for beginners up there. So if you're interested in learning QGIS and you, have, you don't know it very well, you can go check out that course. It provides a lot of data uh, and examples uh, to teach you how to use QGIS.